So today we're taking the boat out and we're going to get a hyperlapse for the intro of our latest video. So we thought at the same time as doing that we could do a tutorial on how to do the hyperlapse with the Mini T. So what I'm hoping for is yep. if you can get like the whole of the bridge from one side to the other um, but I also want to get all the boats going across the waterway or the movement. With Lighty you can use the waypoint mission to do this. So you set your first waypoint at one end, I'm going to set the other waypoint at the other end. Set the cruising speed to a really low speed, hit start and then speed up the footage later. Uh, not only does it record the position but it can record the angle that the drone's at and what the gimbal's pointing at as well. You have to do a few settings in Lighty to do that so I'll show you those first. So we assign C1 key left and we set that to waypoint at aircraft and what that means is it will record the position of the drone, the angle it's facing at and the angle that the gimbal's on as well. Then there's the actual mission settings themselves, that's this little button here and there's a couple of things you need to change. So the heading needs to be on custom. By default that will probably be on auto and if that happens then the drone will just turn to face the next waypoint and it won't capture what we want. So what custom does is it keeps it facing whatever you set that to on the waypoint. Now if you've got one waypoint and another waypoint then it will gradually transition between the angles that you had for those two. So it's really smooth and that's what we want. Mm, that's cool. The only other thing to change on here really um, in the, the initial setup is the gimbal pitch mode. Now if that's disabled that means you have to do it manually. If it's set to interpolate, then that will, again, do exactly the same thing. If you've got the gimbal facing at a certain angle on waypoint one, and you've got the gimbal facing at a different angle at waypoint two, it will gradually transition between those two as you're flying along. So I'm gonna hook the drone up now and get these two waypoints set up. How important is the wind factor in doing the hyperlapse? Yeah, that's very important because the Mini 2 is a tiny little thing. It's very lightweight and it does get blown around in the wind. If it's a windy day, you're going to get very bumpy footage and the drone's going to be bouncing around like this. And that's just going to be even worse when you speed the footage up. So ideally, you want to have a calm and a still day. The other thing that's important is the number of satellites that you have locked because it's going to be using the GPS signal as you go along. So now the drone's connected, I need to kill off DJI Fly. Completely close that whole app down so that Lychee's got the connection. Okay, there we go. Now we've got 16 satellites locked, so that's okay. I'm going to take off and record the first waypoint. Du, du, du. So how do you know where the best place is to do the waypoints are? Is it just from like point A to point B? Yeah, where you want to go to and where you want to go from. And the cool thing about setting it up like this rather than in the mission hub is that you can frame the shot from the camera and have a really good idea what that's going to look like, first of all. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so I'm going to go up a little bit higher put the gimbal down a little bit and that's the first place to start from so we're on the other side of the bridge now we're not too close to all the buildings and everything so I'm going to record the first waypoint there and then we'll whiz back to this end. Can you mark multiple waypoints if you wanted it to say go in a square for example? Yeah you can record as many as you want. Okay so I'm going to get into the shot for the second one just a little bit higher rotate it that way so we've still got the harbour in shot and then I press the function button again to record that second waypoint. Great, okay, that's all set to go. Now what I'm gonna do here is just preview this whole thing first to make sure that it looks okay. You can press the start button here. Start from waypoint one. And now the drone will just fly by itself into that position. Okay, so this will obviously be going quite quickly. Oh wow, that's incredible footage. So what you just literally sit down now and chill out yeah when we do the actual hyperlapse we'll bump that time up to a much longer time and yeah just sit down and wait for it to finish really but have a glass of wine okay that's it all good stop recording now and i'm going to bring the drone back to home so why are we not doing the full hyperlapse now because i want a full battery to do it because it's going to take a long time okay so i don't want to be worrying about running out of battery I'm not going to lie that seagull looks like it's going to attack it apparently Seagulls will absolutely go for your drone. So David put all these orange stickers on it because it scares them away, which obviously is a great thing because you don't want to lose your really expensive drone to a seagull attack. So it looks pretty good, but to be honest, it's quite windy. So I'm not going to do it now because that high plats will be bumpy, but I'm going to come back here later on. So I'm going to do one quick flight with the drone mask on just to check that everything looks okay. Hit the play button. Start from waypoint one and then pop the mask on and see how we're doing. 
looking good so far. It's capturing just what we wanted. Everything's framed up nicely. Okay, so it's getting close to home now. Pop this back out again. So with that flight, the time was only two minutes. And for high flaps, we needed it to be more. So I'm gonna go into the settings here, change the cruise speed. And if we just look down in the bottom corner, I'm looking to optimize the amount of time. So according to DJI, the flight time is half an hour. Um, I'm gonna put that on 15 minutes because I think actually for the size of the bridge, that's gonna be fine. Okay, so we're all set to go. Fire up the drone. I'm gonna to have to kill off DJI fly, no doubt. Okay, so just wait for that to actually connect. Okay, cool, there we are. So I'm gonna hit record here as well. Take off, try not to step into the estuary. We'll fly up to a decent height so we're well clear of the ground. And then hit the start button. And then just keep an eye on things, make sure it's going where we want it to go. So it's nearly in position. Okay, I'm just going to stop recording now. Start recording, recording started. Again. And now I can just put this down because there's no way I'm going to hold this for the next 15 minutes watching it. So while this is happening, I'm just keeping an eye on the signal, keeping an eye on the battery, make sure that everything's in check. But it looks fine to me. Okay, so that's it finished. Now I use DaVinci Resolve, which is completely free to download. It's a very powerful editing tool. And with that, you can apply stabilization to your clips and you can also speed it up. And there's all kinds of speed ramps that you can do to vary the speed at different points. I'm not gonna go into all of that now because there's plenty of tutorials on how to use DaVinci Resolve. But uh, it's a great program, it, as I say, it's completely free and it lets you do all the things that you need to do. So having done that, let's now have a look at the final footage. Mm -hmm.